Howdy folks, Jamboreeky here, and welcome to Jamboreeky Orange, the show where I let my patrons decide what I review. The options for this month's episode included Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, Enchanted, The Page Master, X-Men, Finding Nemo, and Tom and Jerry the Movie. They chose Tom and Jerry the Movie. In this film, Tom and Jerry end up on the streets, where they struggle to survive. A stray dog called Pugsy and his flea encourage the cat and mouse to become friends, but they refuse. Tom and Jerry then end up meeting a runaway orphaned girl called Robin, who is living with the cruel Aunt Fig, who wants to inherit Robin's father's riches and home. When Fig finds out that Robin's dad is still alive, she tries to make sure that Robin doesn't find out. But Tom and Jerry discover the truth and must help Robin find her missing dad. This movie is renowned for being one of the worst ever adaptations of a cartoon series, and while I can see its many problems, I can't say that I hated it as much as its fiercest critics did. No, I'm not going to defend it as an underrated gem because it isn't, but I have to say that I found it to be far more watchable than some of the straight-to-video Tom and Jerry films I've seen. Many have complained that the film ruins the spirit of the cartoons by making the cat and mouse duo become friends, because their whole dynamic is based on their rivalry. But here's the thing, they don't technically become best pals right away. I mean, this movie is not like that itchy and scratchy episode where they decide to not fight and drink lemonade instead. I made it just for you. You are my best friend. No, to be fair, their relationship in this film is more complicated than that. Even though they share a mutual compassion for Robin's situation, they continue to tease or taunt each other, never hiding their grudges and always feeling reluctant to be partners. Not to mention, the idea of them becoming friends isn't introduced completely out of left field in the context of the film. It is implied that these two have closeted affection for each other. Even before Pugsy suggests that they become mates, Tom tries to save Jerry's life in one scene, and Jerry keeps trying to tag along with Tom after they end up on the streets. It's only at the end of the film, when Tom thinks that Jerry might have died, that they finally admit their true feelings. Heck, after doing some research, I discovered that there were loads of classic Tom and Jerry cartoons directly about them becoming friends. Now, I'm not saying that the relationship between Tom and Jerry in this film is well written, because I don't think that's the case. It's very passive-aggressive and confusing, because the writers are very indecisive about whether they get along or hate each other. Heck, after that scene where Tom grieves over a possibly dead Jerry, he goes back to fighting him. <laughs> What I am saying is that I think the whole controversy about Tom and Jerry being friends in this film has been blown greatly out of proportion. I'll admit that the slapstick in this movie lacks the inventiveness and clever timing of the original cartoons. Because it's not where the film's heart lies. Something I do understand that loyal Tom and Jerry fans will hate, because the violence is the whole appeal of the franchise. Then again, the straight-to-video films let the slapstick comedy dominate nearly every scene, and it just becomes annoyingly overbearing. Another major criticism towards the film is that Tom and Jerry talk. The original cartoons were mainly silent, relying heavily on the animation to tell the story, and dialogue was used sparingly to help create verbal punchlines or poignant endings. Say, something is burning around here. But this film makes the cat and mouse have constant dialogue, and rarely embraces their silent roots. This was clearly done because the modern filmmakers didn't have faith in their young audience, fearing that kids would get bored or confused if these two didn't incessantly talk. And I do think it's insulting to underestimate children's patience and intelligence like that. However, while I think that Dana Hill's voice for Jerry is way too young and bratty... How come you never spoke before? Well, there was nothing I wanted to say that I thought you'd understand. And there still isn't. I really do like Richard Kind as Tom. Yes, his scream is nowhere near as satisfying to listen to compared to the originals. <laughs> but Kind has this neurotic voice for Tom that fits the character perfectly. Tom, in this film at least, is meant to be very smug and smarmy. And I think Kind does a great job reflecting that. A cat and a mouse? Friends? That's disgusting. 
So I honestly can't get that annoyed at Tom and Jerry talking because I love Richard Kind's performance enough to compensate for how patronizingly unnecessary it is to make the cat and mouse have speaking dialogue. Maybe that's not enough for some people and perhaps Richard Kind's voice doesn't fit Tom for you, but for me, it's fine. People have also complained about this movie's generic story. Yeah, it's pretty uninspired. It takes the premise of Disney's The Rescuers, two animals having to save a child from an evil, money-hungry adult, and does nothing special or new with it. The movie makers obviously struggled to put Tom and Jerry into a feature film premise, so they made another character the star. In spite of this though, there's one credit I have to give this movie's narrative. Unlike the straight to video Tom and Jerry films I saw, this movie never made me feel bored. You see, this movie can get really ridiculous. It struggles to tell a coherent flowing story so much that it ends up grasping for straws and throws any random idea or trope it can at the script. The end result is a hodgepodge of nonsensical plodding, with one ludicrous thing after another, and while I can imagine this annoying the living shit out of people, I couldn't help but find entertainment out of all this madness. For me, the movie ends up in the so bad it's good territory, because there's some fun to come out of seeing the trains collide in this messy disaster. And I didn't ever feel like this absurdity reached obnoxious levels, like Don Bluth's Rock-A-Doodle. It was the right level of silliness for me. It's just on the edge of becoming annoying. I do wish that the animation was consistently good and didn't look like it had a TV show budget, because some of the crazier moments would have been even more visually wild if the movie was backed up with theatrical, stylized animation. This is also a musical, and I do think that the songs are the worst part of the film. Each song comes right out of nowhere. It's kind of hilarious how randomly introduced they are. These songs also have the same monotonous rhythm all the way through, lacking any life or imagination in the compositions. Yes, animals are business, a money-making business. I kidnap, buy, and sell them for the owners up and tell them. I spend it so well, I'm the best in the biz. A whiz, a whiz. Apple but I'll admit that the lyrics are sometimes decent. When I listened to the rhymes, I could tell that the writers were at least trying, as cheesy as the words got. God's little creatures with sweet and furry features. Four-legged friends I would go to the ends of the earth to protect. Money is such a beautiful word. I know. I know. It soars in my mind like a beautiful bird. I know. I know. Better than that, it makes me feel like an aristocrat. I also think that Robin's song about missing a father is sort of sweet, because it's the only number with any kind of heart. And you can actually hear her sadness in what she's singing. I do. Miss you so. That's another thing I'll give this film. The character of Robin is a decent protagonist. Sure, she's not exactly interesting or well-developed, but I like that she's an active character with a plucky attitude, and she doesn't let Tom and Jerry do all the work. Even though she becomes a damsel in distress at some points, she does take immediate action the moment she discovers that her dad is alive and she will bravely lead the way in some tense situations. Yeah, she's naive about how the world works and overestimates what she's capable of doing, but I find this endearingly realistic because many kids do actually have this obnoxious level of self-confidence. Lastly, what about the villains, Aunt Fig and her lawyer Lickboot? They're your typical one-dimensional, money-hungry baddies, but their animation gets the most expressive fluidity out of all the characters in the film. And I do like that Lickboot demonstrates a bigger conscience than Fig, when he's the only one willing to save Robin from a house fire, because it helps to differentiate the two. To conclude, while I don't think that Tom and Jerry the movie is a good film, it's a cash cow project, designed to leech money off the Tom and Jerry brand name, resulting in a very shallow and uninspired film. 
but when I compare this one with the straight to video Tom and Jerry films I've seen, I think it's far more watchable because it never bored me, thanks to its ridiculous storytelling and so bad it's good value. I also like that there's a silver lining to most criticisms against it, and I reckon that its critics have greatly exaggerated some of its major issues. The movie is bad, but not that bad. I've been Jamboreek and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. So, what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Jamboreeky Orange? Well, that's entirely up to my patrons. The choices for next month's episode include Jurassic World, Four Ragnarok, The Aristocats, How to Train Your Dragon, Paddington, and Despicable Me. Oh, a really interesting bunch of options right there. Now, keep in mind that only patrons can access this poll. What is a patron? Don't worry, I'll explain. This is my Patreon. It's a site for my fans to make monthly donations to me. Those who donate are called Patrons. The money I receive goes towards funding my videos and serves as a supportive income for me. Patrons can donate as much as they want each month and stop donating any time. All donations are greatly appreciated, and in return for their patronage, patrons are given exciting rewards, depending on how much they donate, including their names credited in my main show, access to exclusive videos, and the chance to decide a review on my channel. Very excited to find out which film my patrons want me to review next on this show. Cheerio, folks.